Hey guys, I got a special treat for you today. I have an, a solar expert here uh, to go through the system and uh, show me what I've done wrong. And that way, uh, hopefully you won't make the same mistakes and uh, we'll all learn together. Hey guys, I'm Kevin. I don't know about an expert here, but um, I have been in solar for three years and I've worked on pretty much all aspects of solar from sales to engineering, design, and a little bit of installation. And uh, hopefully I can spread a little bit of my knowledge that I've learned over the few years with you guys. Uh, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. All right, we're on the back side. And uh, one of the things that I'm pretty sure I did wrong is I got the wires just kind of hanging out here between the two panels. Uh, so how bad is this? <laughs> well, I, you know, in a professional installation, that'd be a no, you know, no go. Um, electrical inspector definitely would not pass that. Um, you know, so normally when you're going between your arrays, you want to protect uh, those bare wires. Um, you know, you usually want to put it in a EMT, uh, which is that the metal conduit um, that you will likely see on the sides of buildings. Um, and then, Does it have to be metal or can it be plastic? Well, we usually on the roof prefer metal because it doesn't expand as much. Where, um, where plastic, your PVC, expands significant. It's a coefficient of thermal expansion is, is quite high. Okay. So, um, uh, especially when you're doing a long run, um, you really want to use that EMT. And that's, right. that, that's uh, industry standard, if you will. Uh, over time, the insulation on this wire will very likely rub away um, uh, as the wire moves about, especially when it's not fastened very well to the rail, um, uh, having a sharp corner here. So usually, you know, we would like to um, fasten the, the wires uh, more parallel to the rail as possible. Uh, a lot of manufacturers who manufacture the, these rails, um, such as uh, Iron Ridge or Unirack, they, they'll have a wire management clips that help you tidy up the wires. Not everybody uses them, um, but they are certainly helpful from that perspective because then you don't have the insulation of the wire um, rubbing on this hard surface, uh, which could eventually lead to a ground fault where your wire is exposed uh, and, and contacts and energizes uh, the rail, which is a, a safety issue, which is another thing that we're going to get into soon, uh, is proper grounding. These panels came off of a, a previous install that was installed about nine or ten years ago. Um, this is a grounding lug, right, a ground lug, and you can actually see little remnants of the wire that was attached to it. When they took the panels down, they just snipped the wire so they didn't have to back out that screw. Um, Panels these days uh, can ground to one another through a grounding MIG clamp, and we'll talk a bit, little bit more about that in, in a minute. Um, but back in the day, they used to have to put these grounding lugs on each panel and each rail and bond them together with a copper wire, usually a number six bare copper wire. And what that does is that uh, it keeps all of the metal components of the system um, at the same voltage with respect to one another. Right? Usually these components aren't, they're not charged at all, but in the case that you have a wire such as this, um, have the insulation rubbed off, you can have an issue where the energized conductor or wire, uh, bare copper wire underneath this insulation, contacts the metal surface. And you could then, you would then energize that, that piece of uh, equipment. And if it's not all properly grounded between each metal component and then back to the uh, ground grounding system within the building, you would not actually detect the ground fault. And what could happen is, the risk factor there is, if you then are working on the system and this panel is energized and potentially is in a string with um, many other panels increasing the voltage, it could be a, sh a shock hazard. And people, I would have imagined, have gotten hurt from this. I don't know the <laughs> statistics. Um, but it's a safety feature more for personal safety and fire safety um, to uh, detect ground faults, essentially. So that's why you want all metal components grounded to one another um, and then grounded back to the grounding system within the building. They are all clamped together and they are all metal. However, um, with these older systems, the, uh, the, the, the end clamps and mid clamps that hold the panels to the rail were not considered bonding. So what you can see uh, with this uh, mid clamp uh, from Iron Ridge, it's one of their new mid clamps, um, it has these serrations here um, that allow 
the the mid clamp to dig in past the anodized coating on the frame. And what you can see, that will allow this panel to bond to this panel. Um, and in this case, the spacing between would be the, the thickness of uh, the, the bolt here, um, and, and not as wide as it is in this scenario. But um, as you can see here, um, this clamp is just smooth on the bottom, so it's not actually digging past any corrosion resistant um, coating on the panel. Um, and that is why these older panels required the lugs as we had showed you earlier, those, those grounding lugs with the copper wire. All right, Kevin. Uh, so my free pallet base here is, uh, is this going to blow over in the wind? <laughs> uh, it depends how strong the wind is. <laughs> um, I think it was a really cool idea. Uh, really good way to reuse, especially for a temporary structure. Let's just put that out there. Um, you may want to increase the amount of ballast that you have. Um, you know, it looks like you might have a few hundred pounds in there. Um, may want to double it, uh, to, to provide yourself with a little bit more, uh, you know, security <laughs> gets them blowing <laughs> away. Um, but, you know, you'd really have to do a, a wind loading analysis and run some calculations to, to really understand um, how much in the, how much ballast in the placement of that ballast within the system. And they're all in series, uh, which for shading on even indiv an individual panel pretty much shuts down the system. Um, so it, why that happens is, when you shade a panel, um, its its production pretty much goes to zero, right? And it essentially turns into a resistor. And if they're all in series, that causes the uh, the other ones to to be um, brought down to pretty much the same level that it's producing at, right? So imagine if you had um, a battery pack, right? And one of the cells in those battery packs went bad, and they're all in series. Um, that wouldn't produce very well, even if all the others were fine. Um, again, because they're in series. However, if they're running in parallel, um, you wouldn't have that issue, wouldn't find that issue. Um, so a lot of th times um, on these, they have these newer technologies such as uh, power optimizers, which is a DC to DC converter, um, or microinverters. Um, they're used for partial shading environments. Um, you know, for example, when you have a chimney that's gonna shade one of the panels, because it allows for the other panels to produce to their uh, maximum performance individually, um, uh, aside from uh, the shading of, of their neighbors. So um, these days on most residential rooftops, uh, those type of electronics are used, um, and they're mainly only using string inverters on a wide open roof or uh, ground mounts where there are not, there's a differential shading. Um, in this case, the angle is, is, is not very, uh, it's not really that different. So probably not much, not really measurable. Um, but if it was a more drastic difference, you would see your production um, being a little bit um, hindered by that characteristic. Hey Kevin, thank you so much for coming out, showing me all the flaws in the system. And if you join me on some of the future videos I'll be putting out, we're going to take care of each one of those. And if you have any other suggestions that maybe Kevin didn't catch, leave them in the comments below. If you enjoy these videos, please like and subscribe. Hey, thanks so much for watching.